after a long wait, we're finally here with the 2019 Volkswagen Arteon. And Volkswagen tells us that this new vehicle will be the flagship, not just for their sedan lineup, but for the brand as a whole. And the other good news for Volkswagen is, I think that this car might have just enough luxury to punch above its weight class as well. When thinking about the Arteon, it's really important to think about what it really competes with. And two cars immediately came to mind after driving it, and those would be the Kia Stinger and the Toyota Avalon. So those three cars are kind of similar in price, with the Stinger being the most sporty of the bunch and the Avalon being the most comfortable. The Arteon kind of splits the difference between the two. And also importantly, I think it looks much better than both of those vehicles. There's more than a little bit of Audi in the Arteon styling, and that's, frankly, that's a good thing. When you look at it from the side, there's a lot of A7, a lot of A5 sport back with this kind of coupe-like profile, uh, flowing roof line towards the back there. And up front, you get this really big kind of clamshell hood, lots of sculpting down the sides of this car. The Arteon, it's a really good looking car, especially for a sedan, although Volkswagen would tell you that it's a coupe. This vehicle that I'm driving right now is the SEL Premium R-Line version of the Arteon, and it comes with a bit more sporty flourishes. So you get, you know, this kind of unique bumper up front that has more air inlets on the side. It makes it look more aggressive. Move to the back, you get this very subtle kind of black lip spoiler, and you also get these very cool looking 20 inch black wheels. Um, so the Arteon, you know, even though it's priced more like a non-luxury vehicle, I think it actually competes with luxury vehicles on style, and it also competes on the interior as well. The first thing that you notice about the Archeon, especially in higher trim levels like this one, is the quality of the material. So very good real leather, not leatherette, on each of the seats. And you also get real metal trim pieces on the dashboard, um, real metal trim here down around the shifter. And it just looks and feels more like a premium car than kind of a basic car. Much like there's a lot of Audi in the exterior styling of the Arteon, there's also a lot of Audi on the interior. This screen and kind of setup down here definitely reminds me of uh, past Audis that I've been in, similar to kind of like the A5 Sportback. It's just that instead of the screen being mounted up high, it's down here a little bit in the dash. But, you know, similar screen size. This screen is 8 inches. This screen in that car, 8.3 inches. You also get this 12.3 inch display here in the instrument panel as well. So that's kind of taken from Audi in the same way, though it doesn't really have the same level of customizability when it's in the Volkswagen. So, for instance, you can't put the satellite image of the earth in here but you can expand the map size and it's still a pretty useful way to set up the instrument panel and make it more flexible the second thing that you'll notice about the Arteon is it's got a lot of interior space so this is the spiritual successor to the Volkswagen CC as Volkswagen would call it and even though it's got a five inch longer wheelbase it's only two inches longer overall and the added length to the wheelbase really opens up the interior so most of that length has actually gone to the back seat the back seat actually has 40 inches of rear leg room and when you sit back there there's a lot of space between you and the front even with the seat pushed pretty far back as I do when I drive this also has benefits in the cargo area. So behind the rear seats, you have 27.2 cubic feet of cargo space, and that actually expands out to 55 cubic feet with the back seats folded down. And that makes the Arteon kind of more like a wagon. It's got a lot of space in there when you drop those seats, and you can actually fit really long as well as taller objects because instead of a trunk, it has a lift back. When the Arteon was announced, we actually didn't know exactly which of the powertrains would make it into the U.S. version of the car. But now that it's here, we know that it's going to be the turbocharged 2.0-liter four-cylinder that Volkswagen kind of uses up and down the lineup. Now, in the Arteon, it makes 268 horsepower and 258 pounds-feet of torque, and it comes made into an 8-speed automatic transmission. Not the 7-speed dual-clutch unit that you get in the GTI or the GLI. I actually think that the Arteon would benefit from having that dual-clutch gearbox. The 8-speed that's in here, uh, it isn't bad per se. It's pretty smooth. It's smooth shifting but it doesn't shift as quickly and I think it kind of bogs the engine down when you're accelerating from a stop so when you're at a stop you hit the gas pedal there's a bit of delay before the turbos really kick in and the car really gets moving forward once you do get it in the power the engine provides plenty of power for this vehicle even though this is a larger vehicle that two liter turbo does pretty good work it's just you know keeping it in the power that's a bit of a challenge uh, one thing that Volkswagen did nail though with this car is the suspension. So an adaptive suspension is standard on all trims of the Arteon, which is a pretty cool feature to get at this price level. Another thing that I like about the suspension is its level of customizability. So you go into the menus, you can actually choose a custom drive mode that allows you to sort out things like the steering or the throttle response to exactly how you like them. And for the suspension, instead of just having a drop down menu with a few settings to choose from, you actually get a slider. So in the custom drive setting, you can actually move this slider up and down and mix it between comfort and sport to get it just the way you like it. I haven't seen that feature in a car before and it gives it a level of customization that I haven't seen even in performance cars. The Arteon suspension is definitely dialed in for comfort rather than for kind of sporty driving dynamics. And that does make it a very good grand touring car. It's the kind of car that you'd want to drive for three hours if you had to really get somewhere long, uh, but not quite as good in the canyons. 
That being said though, the suspension does a very good job when you're turning of mitigating body roll. So toss it into a corner, you can actually feel the weight of the car shift, but by the time you exit the corner, especially on those long kind of banking corners, uh, the suspension has figured it out and you exit the car pretty flat and pretty well balanced. And for a car like this that has all wheel drive, that means you can put a good amount of power down on exit given that you're in the right gear. I came away from the RN impressed with how much it looks, rides, and feels like a premium or a luxury automobile. Now, Volkswagen would kind of say that this car is meant to compete with premium vehicles, sort of like the Buick Regal and the Acura TLX. And I can say comfortably right now that the Ardeon is a vehicle that I would take over both of those vehicles. What Volkswagen doesn't mention though, is that I think that the Ardeon compares very favorably to another car that Volkswagen makes, and that would be the Audi A5 Sportback. So the Audi A5 Sportback starts at $45,000, this Ardeon that I'm sitting in right now is pretty much fully loaded at $47,000. And at that price, I kind of think that I prefer the Ardeon over the A5 Sportback. Now, you can get a few features on the A5 Sportback uh, that you can't get on the Ardeon. Um, you can get a little bit nicer materials, you can get a bit more technology. However, to get those things, you're really gonna have to spend on an A5 Sportback. And at that mid $40,000 range, I think that the Ardeon offers you more features. It offers you a much larger, more comfortable interior, and the driving experience between the two isn't that different. The A5 is a bit more agile, but the Ardeon is more comfortable, and it has a very good adaptive damping system that I've come to like, especially on roads like these. The 2019 Ardeon goes on sale this month, so keep an eye out for it at dealerships. And for more information about the car, head over to cars.com.